Hello and welcome to the AutoX Show. Now sit back and relax because we've got a packed show for you today. We head out on an epic road trip looking for culinary delights in North India and even take on the ancient Mughal road. We dial up the adrenaline as I go racing in the Volkswagen Ameo Cup. And Abhishek puts his sensible hat on while he checks out Maruti's brand new Ertiga MPV. Every morning when I leave for work, I see my neighbor's kids being crammed into an MPV as they fight for the best seat in the house for their school run. Now an MPV or an MUV may not be the most desirable form of an automobile, but it sure is very valid in the real world. Now Maruti Suzuki's Ertiga has been performing very well on the sales charts as an MPV for the past few years, ever since its launch in 2012. Considering the evolving demands of the Indian car buyer, Maruti has now brought about this new second-generation model of the Ertiga. Maruti has built this car on the fifth generation of their hardtech platform. But as you can see, leaving aside the new front end, the overall silhouette of the car remains much the same as earlier. And in fact, the car retains its 2740mm wheelbase identical as the previous car. So this new hardtech platform ensures that the Ertiga has now got a new front end subframe and a new rear subframe. The rear axle, in fact, is all new as well. But leaving aside all the technical stuff for now, the new front end looks very nice. That chrome studded front grille is big and imposing. Uh, the new headlights are Xenon projectors. They're not LED projectors like all the other Marutis get. But what is the really good part is that these projectors are standard across the model range of the Ertiga, starting with the L models, going all the way up to the Z Plus models. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the wheelbase is identical to the previous model. And that's a good thing because these doors are really long, as you can see, especially the rear one. So it ensures that there's plenty of space for ingress and egress, making this a very practical MPV. Now, in context to the previous model again, the windshield line here, the door shut lines are all identical to the previous model. But Maruti says that the door sill has been lowered now so that you feel more airy inside the cabin. When it comes to the back of the car, you won't be disappointed here either. For this whole new taillight cluster looks very appealing and upmarket. And uh, the update has really justified the new rear end. Now, as mentioned earlier, the new front and rear end subframes ensure that the new Ertiga is now 130 millimeters longer than the previous car. The new lights again uh, flow from the pillars onto the boot lid and the thick chrome strip lends a nice garnish to it. Uh, what stands out a little bit at the source site is this uh, smallish stop lamp. It looks a little odd in otherwise a very good design of the vehicle. So the new chassis alongside the longer length has made this car 40 millimeters wider than earlier and uh, it's just a marginal 5 millimeters taller than the previous car. However, despite its new platform, this Ertiga weighs identically the same in the base petrol variant as the previous model. The diesel model is 15 kilos lighter than earlier, uh, while the petrol top-in model is 10 kilos lighter than earlier. But it's on the inside where Maruti has really gone to work with this update. For this car, gets an all-new dashboard. Uh, there's a four-layer theme going on. There's a different shade here. There's the air vents, which are designed to look like they're stretched all across the dashboard uh, and behind the infotainment screen and the instrument cluster. Now, when I was talking to the Maruti officials, what they told me is that they have gone for this design because they want to distinguish all their products. You know, earlier, uh, the dashboards were shared between other models, but now customer demand states that they like individual styling for different models. And this looks fairly nice, actually. Uh, there's the for Maplewood finish here, which doesn't look too bad at all. And uh, there's a lot going on. In fact, uh, this car now gets a lot more equipment over the previous model. Um, there is this new climate control system, which was not available in the earlier Ertiga. Talking about new, this car gets a new driver information display system as well. Uh, the TFT screen is borrowed from the Baleno and the Fiaz, and the dials are all new as well. The steering, though, is the same one that you find on the Desire and the Swift. Uh, it's the flat-bottomed unit. Sitting up front, the driving position is fairly good. You have good visibility all around. The height-adjustable driver's seat, in fact, gives you a good commanding view of the road ahead. The new Ertiga's novelty feature, though, I think, comes with these cooled and heated cup holders. So what Maruti has done here is fairly simple. 
They've just drawn a duct from the air vents up top and they channel air to the cup holders here. Now that means this is the same temperature that you're running inside the cabin. And that's not a bad thing because uh, usually in the summers you want a cold drink, in the winters with your heater on you want a hot drink. So you got it there. You can in fact control the airflow over here with the scroller as well. So that's quite a clever feature that they've incorporated. What I don't like though about this cabin are these sun visors. They're really tiny and compared to the huge window that you have here, which is very good, this sun visor barely covers anything on the road. Coming to the second roof, this door is huge and uh, ingress egress is fairly easy. Uh, once you're inside, you have plenty of leg room here. Uh, on that side, there is the lithium ion battery pack, so you can't really put your feet all the way in, but behind the driver you can. Uh, the second row slides back and forth. So, what this does uh, is that it allows you to adjust how much leg room you can give to third row passengers. Now back to the second row itself, uh, there's okay under thigh support here, although lower back support really could have been more. So this second row uh, can be reclined. Uh, and what is new here is a single touch operation feature which allows you to move the seat forwards and down, just like this. Now when it comes to the third row, the new rear subframe ensures that it's not so much of a knees up experience anymore. Um, having said that, you still need more under thigh support. Uh, but as far as seat pack comfort is concerned, uh, you get three positions to adjust your backrest angle. So, When you're driving the Ertiga in city conditions, this petrol manual model is very easy to drive. The clutch is extremely light and the gearbox with its short throws is very easy to operate. Bar delivery is linear and smooth in the low reach so far as urban driving conditions are concerned. And in fact, maneuverability has improved considerably for this car as well. For the steering setup is now lighter than earlier and overall the car generally feels lighter on the handling department. The new rear axle and the steering setup has made this car much more comfortable to drive over its predecessor. As for ride comfort, the suspension setup definitely has become more supple. Out on the highway, this 1.5 litre engine offers very decent performance. At cruising speeds, the engine is usually doing around 2000 revolutions per minute. And at this speed, when you ask for more power, the engine responds in a linear manner. Of course, if you want more power, you can downshift. And as the revs rise, you will notice that from 3500 RPM onwards is where this engine really begins to shine, for it revs fairly cleanly to its 6000 RPM red line. Out on the expressway, the car stays stable at triple digit speeds and cruising at 100 or 120 km an hour as is the national speed limit. And on this particular highway where I was driving, the speed limit was 80 km an hour. And at that speed, you can take fast sweeping bends in the Ertiga without a bother. For an MPV, it has minimal body roll and body control is very good. Maruti offers the 1.5 litre petrol engine in the Ertiga as standard with a mild hybrid system. This system uses a larger lead acid battery as well as a lithium ion battery pack. What the system does in essence is that it assists acceleration so that there is less load on the engine. That aside, the Ertiga also gets an engine stop start system as standard. So this new petrol Ertiga should definitely be more fuel efficient than the model it replaces. So having driven the petrol manual version of the new Ertiga, I can tell you this, that the new model definitely takes the comfort quotient to a new level. The heated cool cup holders, the reclining seats in the second and third row, everything makes it very easy for occupants to get in and about the vehicle and travel in comfort. So this new petrol engine definitely improves drivability as well as fuel efficiency and that's a great thing. This combined with the healthy standard equipment list makes the new Ertiga a very appealing proposition if you're in the market for an MPV. Right, coming up next on the AutoX show, we take you on an epic road trip, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the AutoX show. Now good food and good road trips go hand in hand and this one was just that little bit extra special. I often wonder what the essentials of a good road trip are. A great car is a given. So are some good roads, lots of driving, beautiful scenery and it's important to have a goal for the trip. What are we trying to achieve in this road trip? Well, on this trip, our goal was to find some great food. 
and of course we had a great car too so welcome to the food trail with the audi a4 on our first leg of the audi food trail with the a4 we're in srinagar you know kashmir other than the natural beauty the resources the beautiful mountains also has a rich tradition of food wazwan is very prized here it's a matter of pride to good serving of wazwan and to sample that ourselves we are in adus one of the most premier wazwan restaurants in srinagar uh, this is a brand that has been around for over 100 years and they have a lot of non vegetarian options for me to have a look at so i think it's going to be a pretty interesting first meal on this trip So there are a lot of things you can order in Wazwan but I think what I've opted for is the ultimate. It's a custom platter and what I've chosen for today is a lot of meat but a little bit of vegetarian stuff too. So what you get is the rishta which is basically meatballs in a spicy curry, Kashmiri saag, the nadu yakhni which is lotus stem or kamal kakdi and of course there's mirchi korma you know you have to have some spice and to cool things down there's some gushtaba and it won't be a proper Kashmiri food without some tabak mas. a seek kebab and some plain rice that's a lot of food and a meal that i'm really looking forward to it's one of my first experiences at genuine kashmiri cuisine and this is going to be fun to be honest the wazwan platter adus absolutely blew me away the dishes were stunning tasted heavenly Well, I might be slightly partial to the rista. The mirchi korma literally set my mouth on fire. With the expectations set that high, it would be a big challenge to find food of an equal standard at our next destination, Maclod Gunch. However, before we could reach Maclod Gunch, we first had to drive across the beautiful Mughal Road between Srinagar and Jammu, which offered some truly challenging terrain for the Audi A4 to tackle. spend a lot of time at the beautiful Maclod monastery and it further built up my appetite for our next destination the hub of punjabi food amritsar
Amritsar is a melting pot of many things. Religion, culture, history and of course food. And you also get to see one of the strangest things about India here. That some of the finest food is found in hole in the wall kind of places. And so we found a place that you would almost never notice that served the most amazingly freshly made Amritsari kulcha. Amazing taste, piping hot straight from the tandoor onto your plate and something you should never miss if you are ever in Amritsar. Just ask for the all India famous Amritsari kulcha place at Magbul Road and no, I am not kidding about the name. Having sampled some fantastic food and having driven a few thousand kilometers to do so, I think I can also say that the Audi A4 was a revelation on this trip. It was incredibly efficient, very comfortable, and just the perfect car for the trip. With its comfort, reliability and excellent technology, it truly wrapped up the final criteria of a good road trip, a great car. What am I thinking next? Well, I think a road trip to sample some more amazing food in the northeastern part of our country would be fantastic. All I'm wondering is, what car can I borrow from Audi India this time? Now I don't know about you, but my mouth is watering after watching that film. But don't head to the kitchen just yet, because we're going to set your adrenaline racing right after the break. Now, armchair racing is all well and good. But it's only when you don a helmet, put on a racing suit, that you realize what it takes to put pedal to the metal and go racing in a proper race machine. And as race machines go, Volkswagen Motorsports puts together some of the most immaculately finished race cars in the country. So strap yourselves in, this is going to be fun. So any weekend that is a racing weekend is a really special weekend and this one is indeed special because we are at the Bud International Circuit, India's racing arena and we're taking part in the Volkswagen Ameo Cup. Now there's been a bit of a debate over the last couple of years in India about whether racing is an actual sport. Well it requires a great deal of skill and talent. It requires you to be fit. After all, an F1 driver loses up to three or sometimes over three kilos in a single race. It requires a hell of a lot of focus and determination. It requires the time, effort and money to be able to practice and make your way up the ranks to go pro. So, sounds a hell of a lot like a sport to me. But before we get wrangled into a debate, let's go check out the car and talk to the man who puts this show on the road. So we're here with Sirish Vissa, the head of Motorsport India. Sirish, thank you for having us. My pleasure. And putting me in the driver's seat, that's a very brave move on your part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit about the Amio Cup. The Amio Cup, as you know, is uh, the current generation of our long line of one make championships. Yeah. Uh, this is the second year for us. Uh, starts off life as a regular Amio body shell from yeah. the plant. And we then have our tweaks, of course, to make it a lot more in terms of power, in terms of handling and, of course, safety. So, speaking of power, let's take a look at what's under the hood and see just how you guys tweak this. So, tell us a little bit about uh, the so, engine. The first thing is that uh, the heart of the, the Amio is filled with the uh, 1.8 litre TSI from yeah, the Polo GTI. And not only is it the bigger engine, but we've also got uh, the engine tweaked. So in the uh, Polo GTI, it was about 189 horsepower. Yeah. With this, we are looking at close to uh, what 205 horsepower. Um, and um, 
this is then also mated to a six-speed racing sequential gearbox. Yeah. Of course, we've got the paddles just because uh, designed to be able to cater to complete novices as well as experienced drivers. So we need to have all the safeties in place, which is why we went with the paddles instead of our manual yeah. gear lever. Yeah. And would you like to see other manufacturers coming into the sport to compete with you guys? Because oh, uh, Definitely. I cannot emphasize that enough. Because ultimately, whatever we are doing with the One Make Championship, it's, a, it's at one level. Yeah. But for motorsport to become a more viable marketing platform for all of us, yeah. we need to have, be competing against one another. Yeah. We need to then sort of engage the brand loyalties yeah. of the audience, of the spectators yeah. in to make this a much bigger sport. Yeah. And yes, I would love to see all of our competitors involved because I think that's when we can not only make motorsport much better, we can also then make the whole entertainment value of it much better. Yeah. Well, thank you once again for having us and you. I'm looking forward to getting out there. Good luck. Thank you. Quick weekend roundup. Qualified in third yesterday. I would have preferred to have been maybe a little bit higher up, a couple more tenths of a second faster, but I'll take it. Uh, first race was completely chaotic. Uh, there were safety cars, there were red flags, there were accidents, there were guys flipping three times over. Uh, it was restarted and then safety car again, so it was completely chaotic. In the midst of it all, my shoe even came apart. So uh, you know that there was chaos inside the car, outside the works. But managed to stick my nose out in front and managed to stay there amidst the chaos despite the chaos we finished in p1 but while i have you in between race one and race two we're in a in a bit of a break race two starts uh, in a couple of hours time and it's a reverse grid so what that means is that the top eight start in reverse order so i finished first i'm going to start race two in eighth while i have you in the car i want to show you some of the details in this phenomenal race car it's really really well prepared uh, there's a roll cage, of course, and the minute you put uh, the roll cage is, is for safety. But the minute you put minute you put a roll cage into a car, it gives you additional stiffness. It gives you better handling. It gives you better rigidity, and it really gives you a race car feel. I'm sitting facing a small three-spoke steering wheel with paddles right behind me. Um, the gearbox is phenomenal. It's a racing gearbox, and it just bangs through the gears. Uh, there's a, a fire extinguisher system. So there's a fire extinguisher in the back. Uh, this arms the system and then there are nozzles uh, at various points in the car and if there's a fire you press this red button uh, if there isn't a fire you want to stay as far away from that as possible so it's nicely highlighted and it's separate don't touch that if there's no problem so you're strapped in really tight so that if anything happens in the event of an accident we had one car which flipped three times the driver got out no problem because you are one with the car then you can't move your head because you've got a Hans device We'll show you that in a second, so I can't even move my head that much. There's a net on this side, uh, so it's quite claustrophobic, really, really warm. When you're in the race car, sitting in the sun is at 40 degrees, um, but very comfortable place to be, and you are really at one when you're strapped into the race car, and it is a true cockpit. In the second race, I managed a good start and made up some places. In attempting to overtake another competitor, I got too eager. I got alongside, smelled blood, and we touched. I did apologize for my part, but what can I say? Sometimes the red mist of racing clouds your judgment and the adrenaline gets the better of you. Within the span of just a couple of hours, I had experienced the highs and lows of racing. It's a true roller coaster after all, on and off track. I was happy for the win of course, but disappointed with the incident in the second race. The grey hair on my beard had allowed me to walk away with the trophy against much younger competition in race 1, but couldn't prevent me from the incident in race 2. Still more to learn, I suppose. Well, I want to thank Volkswagen Motorsport for running a truly professional series and for giving me a chance to compete 
against their budding racers. That's all the time we have this week, I'm afraid. But next week on the AutoX Show, we check out a pair of truly premium SUVs from Indian automakers. The Harrier from Tata Motors and the Alturas from Mahindra. Now remember, it's chaos out there. So buckle up and always wear your helmets. We'll see you again next weekend on the AutoX Show.